Hey guys, welcome back. I wanted to uh, continue the jail series I'm doing on different types of housing uh, assignments inmates will have. And this is basically for new corrections officers going into a jail and kind of knowing what to expect. So the most restrictive cell we have is known as a VC cell, a violent cell. And there's two ways to end up in the cell. It's not just for simply misbehaving. That's more of a segregation assignment, right? Or like odd behavior guys who can't um, make it in a general population housing assignment for whatever reason, maybe they, they don't, um, you know, they've been kited out for their own safety. This is not the place for that. A violent cell is a padded room. And there's two ways to get in that room. One, you're actively suicidal. And two will be you're actively combative, specifically towards staff, right? So in the top right-hand corner, you'll see a guy dressed out in what some of you may not recognize this type of clothing. Um, it kind of looks like a moving blanket, something you would get at like Harbor Freight or whatever else. It's specifically made not to tear. And what it's referred to as is a suicide smock. And on the shoulders, you'll have Velcro and in the back, it will Velcro as well. And you're gonna wear it kind of like a dress. And then you'll see a blanket on the floor there. Now that blanket is actually extra. Um, some facilities may give it to the MA because it's oftentimes pretty cold in the VC. It's only one person in there. They don't intend it to be super cold and it's within jail standards, right? But it can be because the person's there sleeping, they could get a little chilly. And sometimes a supervisor will authorize a, another suicide smock or a blanket to be given. So what this room consists of is padded walls. It's a special material. Uh, it's pretty expensive to repair and replace. So keep that in mind. Something to let inmates know if they're trying to destroy it. Hey, look, you may not want to do that because they could seek civil restitution from you. And there's, uh, so you have the padded walls, a light up top. Um, usually that's reinforced. There's, you, there's going to be a camera in the cell as well to allow for observation to make sure the person's not trying to hurt themselves or destroying the cell. And then the hole in the ground you see there is for cleaning the cell and using the bathroom. And that both means to urinate and, you know, defecate. So a lot of inmates, uh, you know, they'll say, that, well, I need to go take a poop. And if they're actively combative, do you have to allow that? And the reality is that meets the standard in that moment. So they can either hold it um, and you're going to give them toilet paper and whatnot, just enough to do what they have to do. Um, they're not, certainly not going to get the roll. You're going to, you're going to tear it off for them, open up the food port, give them a little bit. If they need more, you're going to do the same. And then, um, you know, you can flush it. There's going to be a flush uh, button outside the cell and it will, you know, but that's just the reality of the cell. You do not want anyone in there longer than you have to leave them in there, right? And really what that means is their own behavior is gonna dictate how long they're gonna be in that cell. You get water. Uh, one thing I talked about before is, uh, a CO will come to the food port. They may will request the water. Hey, you're going to tell them to stand back. You're going to open up the food port. You're going to leave it on uh, a little cardboard cup, paper cup um, of water right there. And then they, you'll step back. They may will come grab it. They'll grab it. They'll drink it. They'll put, you know, the empty cup there on the food port. And then you'll tell them to step back and then you will grab it. That's pretty textbooks, guys. Um, understand that, like I said before, their actions dictate how long they're in this room for. Legally speaking, they have to be reviewed every 24 hours. So in the right-hand corner, 
you'll see an inmate who's dressed out in a suicide smock. If the person's combative, you're not necessarily going to dress them out in a suicide smock. They can remain in their um, street clothes. Uh, they can remain in their inmate uniform, depending on the facility's policies, right? You don't know them to be actively suicidal. Um, they're just being combative towards staff. They're spitting on you, um, whatever it may be. Uh, so, but with the actively suicidal people, once the staff member makes that determination that they are actively suicidal, it's not the staff member, it's not the CEOs that can say, hey, look, this person's now good to go. It's been a couple hours. You know, you are not legally allowed to make that call. It has to come from a mental health professional. And it could be MHMR, MHTD, mental health and developmental disabilities, et cetera, whoever your county is dealing with to provide those services. Um, they're going to interview the person and then make that decision. Hey, look, they need to be in there another 24 hours before we do a reevaluation or they're good to go. And it's once every 24 hours. When you may remove this person from the cell when they're suicidal is like to take them to magistration. They're good. They could be uh, calm and you're going to walk them from the cell walk them to magistration and walk them back. Uh, basically, they're never gonna leave your presence. Other times it's like doctor's appointments, et cetera. Hey, look, this is what we got to do, like meeting with MHTD. This is not a fun environment to be in for anyone involved, right? Where we can make the decision to remove somebody from BC and place them in a new housing unit or um, wherever the supervisor guys decide to put them, a single cell maybe, is when the person is combative or you know when you make the determination that this person is assaultive to you towards staff and you, need, you do need justification for that. Um, hey, look, they could possibly come out before uh, the 24 hour mark, right? Um, and most likely they, they're going to be. Uh, usually when a person gets that angry, it's usually a couple hours to, hey man, I don't know what happened earlier, but are you ready to, you know, try again? And really you're legally obligated to do that, right? Because you can't leave them in there forever. Um, now, if they become combative again, absolutely, you're gonna document that. And hey, look, we tried to bring this person to a new housing unit or back to their old housing unit, depending on what it was. Their actions dictate how long they're going to be in the VC cell. Food. Food is typically served in a styrofoam uh, plate, kind of like a like a takeaway to go plate that you would get that box, styrofoam box type deal. Uh, and then a paper spoon will be the utensil. They're not gonna get the plastic jail uh, issued utensil. They're not gonna get a plastic cup, anything that they can hurt themselves. It's just not gonna happen. Usually uh, VCs are served with a double main and then a couple sides and like two pieces of bread, whatever it may be. So they're actually, you know, food wise, there, there is no issues there. You're not gonna go hungry in the VC cell. Now, whether you eat it or not uh, is up to you if you're in there. Um, you cannot hoard the food. And to the new COs, be very cautious about leaving food or what's perceived as empty trays in there. The inmate says they wanna keep it um, for later. That's not allowed because they, you know, they could be stopping up the drain. What inmates like to use is the shoving the styrofoam down into the toilet and it will clog it up. Pretty gross. Prevent it from flushing, et cetera. And it's really difficult to uh, fix that. The door, keep in mind there's a small opening at the bottom of the door. 
inmates will also like to pee under the door, uh, particularly when the inmate, or excuse me, when the CO is standing right in front of it, trying to have a discussion with the inmate. Um, and you're not going to realize it until you're standing in a puddle of urine. You cannot let these type of deals uh, infuriate you. You're going to have to control your emotions when talking to these people. You have to remain calm. You know, remember that you are this person's way out of the VC cell. And the more you're able to talk to them as a human will bring them down or back to reality is a better way to put it, I think. Now, some things to be aware of is people will be suffering from pretty severe mental health issues. Um, and mental health can be drug induced. You know, they could be hallucinating from a bunch of methamphetamine or whatever they're using. And uh, certainly they can be combative towards staff during that moment. They can rub, um, you know, when you're looking through this cell, the walls look pretty clean here, but there is a possibility that it may, in the past or whatever, has rubbed uh, their feces on the wall, heat on the wall, whatever it may be, rub food all over the place. In my particular county where I worked, the inmates, uh, we had inmate workers and they were, um, they would wash the walls, et cetera, after an incident, but it could still be, I mean, just be cognizant of where you're working in biohazard stuff. And of course the inmates are told the same thing. They're gonna be given proper PPE gloves, um, a lot of times they'll dress down uh, in plastic bags or whatever else to just uh, help them um, from being contaminated. All right, guys, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, this provides an open discussion. In terms of dealing with this environment, it's going to be um, somewhat startling. Uh, it's a, corrections can be an eye opener in terms of how bad uh, psychologically people can get in terms of how far they are detached from reality. And dealing with individuals in VC is, is just part of that. All right, guys.